Welcome to today's deep dive. We're going to be um, digging into the experiences of adult women with autism. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be really interesting because it's not just your typical, you know, autism awareness thing. Right. We're looking at this website called Cheap ADA. Okay. And specifically this article called Hidden Struggles of Adult Women with Autism. Voices from the Spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. And it is eye-opening. It really is. So get ready for some serious aha moments. You're definitely going to hear some stories that challenge some of those common misconceptions about right. autism. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I think is so interesting is that it really shows how differently autism can actually present in women. Okay. You know, and it often goes unnoticed, like yeah. under the radar. For years. Years and years. Yeah. Sometimes even decades. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit. Sure. So the article talks about this idea of a late diagnosis, mm -hmm. really common in women. Very common. So what's that all about? Well, like how... Okay, so imagine yeah. imagine going through life and feeling like you're constantly uh -huh. trying to fit a puzzle piece into the wrong space. Oh! Okay. You know, something's off. Oh, yeah. But you can't quite put your finger on it. And yeah. that's what it's like for a lot of women with autism. Really? They spend years, sometimes decades decades wow not understanding why they feel different mm. why social situations can feel so draining right why sensory input can be totally overwhelming yeah um and it's not until later in life sometimes mm -hmm. you know their 30s their 40s even later that they finally get a diagnosis wow so that's got to be like a whole life coming into focus yeah and also kind of frustrating i would think absolutely but like I it's bittersweet. Yeah. It can be incredibly validating to finally have a name. Right. For what you've been experiencing. Sure. But it can also be, you know, kind of a tough pill to swallow because, yeah. you know, you think back and you think, wow, like, what if I had known? Yeah. What if I had had this information? Right. Um, and it's like one woman in the article said, yeah, you know, getting her diagnosis in her 30s was life changing. Hmm. But she also couldn't help but wonder, what if I had known all along? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So if autism in women can be so hard to spot, hmm. how are they like managing right. to go so long? Yeah. How do you live? Without anyone noticing. Right. How do you function? Yeah. Well, this is where this fascinating concept of masking comes in. Okay. Essentially, many women with autism become incredibly adept okay. at hiding their symptoms, Brilliant. blending in socially, uh -huh. conforming to, you know, what's considered neurotypical expectations. Yeah. So think of it as a kind of social camouflage Interesting. that they develop right. to navigate a world that often feels very confusing and overwhelming. That makes sense in a way, right? Right. But because if you don't feel like you fit in, you're going to find ways to adapt. Exactly. But that sounds exhausting. It is exhausting. And that's the double-edged sort of masking. Okay. So on the one hand, it allows women with autism to function right. in a world that really wasn't designed for them. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it takes a huge toll yeah. on their mental health and well-being. So they're constantly on. Yes. Like always performing. Always performing. I mean, one of the quotes that really struck me was yeah. this woman who was describing it as like, she was constantly putting on an act, yeah, like never truly able to be herself. It's exhausting. Yeah. And it's like she's saying, this is me pretending to be someone I'm not. Right. Just to get through the day. Right. And that kind of constant pressure to conform, to suppress your natural instincts and yeah. responses, it's bound to have consequences. And we're not just talking about being like, you know. A little tired after a party or no 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 this is bigger this is much bigger we're yeah. talking about serious long-term mental health implications wow think about it if you're constantly trying to be someone you're not right. depressing your true self yeah it can lead to anxiety yeah. depression yeah even contribute to this feeling of like being lost wow like you're an imposter in your own life wow yeah. It's a lot. And it's not just the social stuff, right? Right. Like the article also goes into this whole sensory overload thing. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I really got it before. Right. Like I thought it was just, you know, like disliking certain sounds or whatever. Yeah. But it's way more than that, isn't it? It's so much more than that. It's like, um, imagine your brain is this orchestra, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And every sensory input you get like sights and sounds, smells, textures. Yeah. All of it is like an instrument in the orchestra. Okay. But for someone with autism, yeah. sometimes those instruments are like yeah. 
playing out of tune or they're way too loud or they're all playing at the same time. Okay, yeah, I get it. So like a crowded restaurant, for example, yes. would be like total... It's sensory chaos. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like you've got dishes clattering and people talking and bright lights and maybe even strong smells from the kitchen. Oh, yeah. And it's not just distracting, it right. can be completely debilitating. Wow. Like the article quotes this one woman who describes it as feeling like her senses are on high alert all the time. Oh, wow. Just constantly bombarded. Yeah, so it's like you can't even think straight, I guess. Exactly. Wow. So yeah. if you're dealing with that constantly, the sensory overload, mm -hmm. and then you add in the social pressure of masking. Right. That's going to no. be a lot. Well, it's a recipe for some serious mental health challenges. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's what we see, unfortunately, mm -hmm. with a lot of autistic women, mm -hmm. higher rates of things like anxiety and depression, even burnout. Right, because you're just like constantly... On edge. On edge, yeah. yeah. And it's like one woman in the article said she has a hard time even separating Bye. her autism from her anxiety because they're so intertwined, you know? Yeah. It I just know. becomes this vicious cycle. Right. So then you take all of that. Yeah. And you try to like function in the workplace. Exactly. Which yeah. the article talks about too. Yeah. The workplace can be a really tough environment Better. for people with autism, especially women. Yeah, because it's like all these unspoken rules. Oh, and, my gosh, all those unspoken social rules. Right, and like office politics. Yes. And, you know, you got to do the small talk. Oh, the small talk. It's a minefield. It's like all that stuff that some people just seem to, like, get. They eat it up. Yeah, exactly. And then other people, it's just like. It's painful. It's painful. It's awkward. It's incredibly awkward. Yeah, and it's not just about being awkward, though. Right? Like, it can actually affect people's careers. Absolutely. Like, if you don't excel at that stuff... That's true. You might not get the promotion, even if you're amazing at your job. You're right. Which is really unfair when you think about it. It is. Yeah, because it's like, why should that matter? Exactly. You know what I mean? It's about the work. Yeah, like, can you do the job or not? Right. Can you do the job well? Exactly. That should be the focus. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting in the article is this one woman who was talking about yeah. how she wished her employers were more aware yes. of how to support neurodiverse employees. Right, because we're not all neurotypical. Yeah. Not everyone's brains work the same way. Exactly, and that's okay. Right, and in fact, it's a good thing. Absolutely. You know, because we need people who think differently. Of course we do. Diversity is essential right. for any su successful team or organization. And this need for understanding and support... Mm -hmm. It goes way beyond just the workplace, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we can't talk about autistic women right. without talking about motherhood. Motherhood is a whole other layer of complexity. It really is. For anyone. Yeah. But especially for women with autism. Like, give me an example of that. Well, imagine trying to manage your own sensory sensitivities, right? Like we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're also trying to be attuned right. to the needs of a child. Of course who may or may not also be on the spectrum. Wow. So it's like this constant balancing act. That's a lot. It's a lot to handle. Yeah. And then you add in the emotional aspect. Oh, yeah. Because moms are hard enough on themselves anyway. Oh, absolutely. I remember that quote from the article. Which one? Where the mom was saying, like, she just felt so isolated. Oh, yeah. And, like, she was constantly questioning. Second guessing. Yeah, second guessing. Sorry. Like, am I You'd doing enough? Me. Am I doing it right? That self-doubt can be crippling it's heartbreaking you know it is because these are women who clearly care so much they do but they're just facing these challenges without enough support and understanding a lot of the time that's the hard part is yeah. that feeling of not being good enough yeah of not quite fitting in right that follows so many autistic women yeah. throughout their lives it's yeah. tough it's easy to get stuck on like the challenges right right but i'm sitting here thinking about like the strength Oh, yeah. That it must take. Absolutely. To, like, deal with all that every day. It's incredible. Yeah. The resilience of these women. Yeah. It's inspiring. Totally. And they're constantly adapting and, like... Constantly problem like solving. Problem solving. Advocating for themselves. Yeah. And a lot of times, like, they don't even realize how strong they are. That's the thing. Right. And that's what we need to celebrate. Absolutely. We need to celebrate their strengths. Yeah. And recognize their challenges. Totally. Mm -hmm. But it's also clear from the article that, like support is so crucial oh it's essential you know like just being seen and heard it makes all the difference yeah imagine you're carrying around this weight 
of mm-hmm. feeling different and misunderstood. Like right. you're somehow failing mm-hmm. just by being yourself. Right. And then someone comes along, yeah. listens to your story and says, I see you, I hear you, you're not alone. Wow. That's powerful stuff. So powerful. Yeah. It reminds me of that quote from the article mm-hmm. where that one woman was saying like she craves connection with other women who get it. Yes. You know, like just knowing she's not alone in this. Exactly. It's about finding your people. Yeah. Your tribe. The ones who just get it. Right. And it's about the rest of us, like opening our minds and our hearts. Yes. And making space for those conversations to happen. A hundred percent. You know, this deep dive has been amazing for me. It's been eye opening for sure. Like I really felt like I had this very narrow view of autism Mm -hmm. and it's like this deep dive to like threw open a window. I love that analogy. And let in all this fresh air and light. Yes, because that's what it's all about. Right. Expanding our understanding. Challenging those assumptions. Challenging those And like recognizing that there's so much diversity. Absolutely. Within the autism spectrum. Especially among women. Yeah. So where do we go from here? Like what can we all do? That's the big question, right? Yeah. To actually create a world that's more inclusive and supportive for autistic women it starts with listening okay truly listening to their stories and experiences so important right and educate yourself yeah challenge your own biases Mm -hmm. and when you encounter someone who seems different yeah don't judge don't dismiss right approach them with curiosity and empathy because you never know who's struggling exactly you never know who might be silently struggling yeah those are wise words (laughs) Well, this has been a masterclass in empathy for me. It's been a pleasure diving into this with you. I hope everyone listening feels inspired to keep learning and growing. Keep the conversation going. Because creating a world that's more inclusive benefits everyone. It does. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey. Thank you.